Modding your Nintendo Switch is one of the best things you can do as it allows you to open up a whole new world of opportunities. And while the modding process can be daunting to new users, it has gotten a lot easier over the past few years and is definitely now worth considering. So in this video, I'm going to showcase some of the coolest things a modded Switch can do and I'm going to explain to you why now is the best time to get one. Let's check it out. So the first thing you'll want to do with a modded Nintendo Switch is install Homebrew and Emulation. Currently the best place to get Homebrew on the Switch is with the HB App Store which allows users to install various themes, applications, games, and emulators. There are a ton of other features that are offered for download through the Homebrew Store such as ports of different games. As of now some ports are offered through the Homebrew Store with newer ones being added every few months. Also as briefly mentioned before, Emulation is available on the HB App App Store, such as the most popular one, Retro Arc, which allows you to play a plethora of older consoles. Now, one important thing to remember with Retro Arc is that its cores are constantly being updated, and 3D graphical consoles can sometimes be hit or miss. For instance, the GameCube doesn't run all that well on the Switch, while less demanding systems like the Sega Mega Drive run great, so it's just something to be mindful of if you do plan on installing emulators onto your device. And so, moving along, the next thing to do with your modded Switch is to stream games. Now I know some people might hear that and they'll instantly be turned away as streaming video games is not for everyone, but when it comes to the Nintendo Switch there are a lot of different ways to stream on and off the device with one of the most popular applications being Moonlight. This piece of software allows users to stream their PC games onto their Switch and with some overclocking they can even get it up to 1080p resolution on the handheld. The final experience is quite good and there is very minimal delay in terms of input between the Switch and the PC. Yet Moonlight isn't the only option you'll have when streaming to the Switch, as Chiaki also offers a way for users to stream their PS5 systems onto their Nintendo Switch. It's very similar to what Moonlight is doing, but instead utilizes the PS5, with the quality and streaming being very similar between the two. However, both these two streaming software shown here only allow for the Switch to stream an image, but what if you want to stream your Switch gameplay onto your PC? Well, there's also a piece of software for that known as SysDVR which gives users the ability to connect their Switch to their computer via USB or Wi-Fi and stream the gameplay. And while some people might not see SysDVR as beneficial due to capture cards existing, it still gives users the ability to record footage while in handheld mode which is something that most recording devices are not able to do. But not everyone wants to stream to their device and some people just want to mess around with the custom firmware leading to my next discussion which is modded Switch games. This is where system tools like MUMMC come into play as they give users the ability to create their own emulated NAN, allowing them to add whatever cheats or mods they want onto their games. This allows for some pretty cool things such as custom characters on Smash Bros Ultimate, special islands on Animal Crossing, and not having to deal with your weapons constantly breaking in Zelda Breath of the Wild. When it comes to hacking the Switch, being able to modify your games is personally my favorite part, and one of the game mods I highly recommend you check out is CTGP Deluxe for Mario Kart 8. This mod adds a bunch of new custom tracks into the game along with a revised soundtrack for the newer courses. Another game that is great for modding is Skyrim due to the sheer volume of different adjustments you can make to the game. You can do some crazy stuff like nuking everything in sight and even using spells that slow down time. In general there really is no limit to the amount of things you can do when modding your Switch games, it's just important to stay mindful of not using mods online. Hack Nintendo Nintendo Switches are capable of switching between their system NAN and emulated NAN, meaning if you want to play online, you can switch to your system NAN, which is an unmodified version of the game, and if you want to play modified games, you just switch over to your emulated NAN. Again, this might seem confusing to newcomers, but do not worry because it's actually quite easy and there's a ton of YouTube content nowadays displaying how you modify a Switch without risking any kind of ban. Still, modding your Switch games is not the only worthwhile thing you can do, as there are a ton of other softwares which give you access to a wide range of different things. Mission Control, for example, is a tool that allows players to use other console controllers natively on the Nintendo Switch. Fizu, on the other hand, is a software that lets players adjust the color of their screens and is very handy for people who do not have an OLED Nintendo Switch. Lastly, SysCLK is a module that lets you overclock the Switch and is very handy for more intensive games where frame rates might dip. Now, of course, overclock 
walking can be risky, so I'd recommend following guides for that one and making sure you do not go overboard. All in all, there are so many features and things to discuss when it comes to what your modded Switch can do, and I did my best at summarizing some of the key ones here. As of today, I think it is worthwhile modding your Switch because of how easy the process has become. I was inspired to make this video after reading through a 2022 article on a website called Screen Rant. The article was the first to appear on my search engine when looking up Switch modding, and the website talks about how you should avoid modding your Switch, which I think is a terrible piece of advice. Nowadays, there are so many different ways to mod a Switch, and the amount of risk is extremely minimal. If you make sure to follow along with guides and videos online, you're not going to have many problems. Also, another thing to consider is that you can always buy a Switch to use for modding while keeping a separate one for online play, but again, it's all up to you and your own personal preference. So while I could rant on more about this topic, I will keep it short by saying, if you are on the fence about modding your Switch, I believe it is worth doing. Anyways, that is the end of this video. Hopefully I was able to convince some people to consider modifying their Switches, and if you have any other recommendations on stuff to do with a modded Switch, please put them down in the comments below. Also I just want to thank you for watching all the way until the very end, and I ask that you please subscribe if you have not already, and with all of that said, I will see you very soon soon. Take care.